So you want to see your Active Directory groups automatically synchronized in the policies of your panorama, but you don't know how to do it? So this is the video for you. So guys, my name is Ricardo from NetSums and I'm gonna show you how to do it in the computer. So let's head to the panorama. So guys, now I'm at my panorama and under policies from panorama, I cannot select any Active Directory groups when I'm creating new rules. Let me show you, if I go to add, I'm trying to add now a security rule and I go to source and I have here a field called source user. If I click on add, I cannot select any Active Directory groups. And this is what we want to achieve in this video, to be able to select here the active some Active Directory groups. So for that, we need to go first to my Active Directory, and I want to create a new user that we're gonna use to read through LDAP the Active Directory groups. So this is my Active Directory, and here I have already created a service account, which is just a normal account. If I double click on it, you're gonna see this account is called SA minus LDAP. And if I go to member of, this, this account is just a member of domain users. You don't need any special membership here for this user. Just a domain user is enough for this user to be able to read the LDAP information. I have already set for me under view advanced features. So you can do this and then you, when you double click on active uh, service account on this user, you're gonna see this tab called attribute editor. And if you go in this attribute editor, you're gonna find an attribute called distinguished name. This you need to double click and then you copy the string because you're gonna use it later on on the firewall. So let's go back to the panorama now. I'm gonna show you how you can use this distinguished name there. So if you enjoyed this video so far and you're still not a subscriber yet, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us a lot. Thank you. So back to Panorama, this string that we copied is gonna help us to configure the new server profile LDAP. So for that, we're gonna click on add. Profile name, I'm just gonna call it server prof profile LDAP. Under server list, I'm gonna just give a name to my server, Windows 2022. The LDAP service, this is the IP address or the FQDN. Windows 2022.netsums.com, this is my server and it's entering on port 389. I haven't configured my lab any TLS so I'm just gonna uncheck this option, require SSL TLS. But if you're on production, I would strongly recommend you to keep, to keep this checked and configure your LDAP or your uh, Active Directory server currently. Under type, select FT Active Directory. And then under bind DN, what Panorama expects here is the distinguished name from a user in the Active Directory that's able to read the LDAP information. In our case, our service account is enough. So I just pasted the, the string that we copied and then everything after dcagdcnetsumzc.com, I'm gonna copy and paste here as my base DN. The password to my user. And that's it for this LDAP server profile. Just click on okay. Now we're gonna go to user identification and we're going to create a group mapping. Ah, it's already selected, group mapping settings and then click on add. Name I'm gonna call group, oh. mapping, net sums. And here I'm gonna select my server profile, the one that we just created. And then you're gonna see some fields already getting filled out. Object class is group, object class is person. You don't need to change anything here. And that's it, I'm gonna click on okay. I configure my files using Panorama and I'm sending this to my virtual file. So I'm gonna commit this configuration. And I'm gonna show you later 
at the file what we see there. If you're interested in the cheat sheet for the Palo Alto CLI commands, you can download yours for free on netsums.com slash resources. So now I've got my firewall and the configuration has been committed. So if I go to device, user identification and then group mapping, I can see my new group mapping settings that I created. And if I click on it and go to group include list, now I can see that the file can read the Active Directory structure. And if I come here now to policies and click on add, we can see that under source, if I click on add, I receive the list of the Active Directory groups. Yeah, there are a lot of groups. I'm gonna show you later how we can filter this. So you only receive some part, part of the groups, not all of these standard groups from Active Directory, only the ones that you created that you want to see here on Panorama or on the, at the file. Now we're gonna go back to Panorama. Now I'm back at my Panorama. And if you click on Policies and click on Add, just as the file, click on Source. Can be that you see the groups here, can be that you don't see. I can see the groups and I'm gonna show you, if you don't see the groups here, I'm gonna show you something else that you need to configure. So go to cancel and go to panorama and under templates, you need to be sure that you have under user ID master device, one of the devices in this template stack. I mean, you need to click on the stack. You need to select one of the devices from the stack. I have only one device. It means it's already written here. The master device is the file from which Panorama gathers user ID information for use in policies. Through this option here, Panorama gets the information from the file. But now, as we said, we don't want to see all the groups from Active Directory. So we go back to device, under user identification, group mapping settings. There, there is a field called search filter for group objects. And here you can enter your filter. In my case, I'm gonna enter a filter just called domain asterisk. With this filter, the file is only gonna show me the groups that start with domain. So if I click on okay and commit my configuration, we're gonna check if it works. So my commit is through. And if you come here to policies and now click on add under source, gonna see source user, click on add. We only see the AD groups that start with domain. So this is a way that you can filter the, the groups. Usually the companies that I've worked with, they have a structure on Active Directory that allow us to come here and say, all the groups that are supposed to, to be synchronized with the file, they start with GRP from group underscore FW, for example. So usually, so the groups that they want to be, con to be synchronized with the file, they start with a grp underscore fw and then they put whatever they want after that. So when they do that, they know we're going to be able to create file rules using these Active Directory groups. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video until the end. I hope you got some value from the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If yes, please, if you're still not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Like I said, it does help us a lot. Hit this like button, help us the algorithm, help us also more people to find a video like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.